The most surprising trade so far of the offseason was the one that sent Kristaps Porzingis to the Boston Celtics, Marcus Smart to the Memphis Grizzlies, and Tyus Jones to the Washington Wizards. Draft picks were involved in the trade package as well. Without question, the best talent pound for pound in this trade is Porzingis, but it's understandable why some might feel losing Smart will hurt the Celtics in the long run because of everything he does defensively, his toughness, and the leadership qualities he brings to the locker room. With that said, Porzingis quietly had a terrific 2022-23 season. In fact, one might argue it was the best of his career, largely because he was relatively healthy and was given far more opportunity to showcase his all-around skills. Just from an efficiency standpoint, Porzingis was in a good rhythm most of the year. He wasn't that far from having a 50-40-80 season. He shot 49.8% overall from the field, 38.5% from three-point range, and 85.1% from the free throw line. The Wizards made Porzingis more of a focal point of their offense than the Mavs did, and even the Knicks when he was in the infantile stages of his career. In 2022-23, he took a career-high 145 shots in isolation per second spectrum. Never had he taken over 100 shots in one-on-one -on -one situations. He shot 46.9% in isolation this past season. Just to compare, in 2019-20 with the Mavericks, he shot just 25.3% in isolation, and in 2016-17, when he was with the Knicks, he shot 28.1% in these situations. What you might notice a lot with Porzingis is opponents playing him very tight and really getting up into his body. And the reason for this, from my perspective, is to try to get him off balance and test his base strength. Porzingis, meanwhile, uses his length so well that it's hard to contest his shots. But defenders had their most success against him when they gave him practically no space, as these clips highlight. Across different ranges, he displayed great shooting touch. From 3 to 10 feet out, he shot a career-best 53.4%. Among the 18 players who took at least 200 shots from this distance, that was the 6th best percentage. Only Nikola Jokic, Nikola Vucevic, Luka Doncic, De'Aaron Fox, and Steph Curry had better marks. From 10 to 16 feet away, he shot a career-best 49.1%. He was one of only 18 players to shoot at least 49% from this range with a minimum of 100 attempts. Unsurprisingly, Kevin Durant had the best mark at 59.1%. Porzingis also uses the glass really well. He made the third most bank shots in the league with 29 of them. Only Doncic and CJ McCollum made more. Another effective way Porzingis scored in 2022-23 was in the post. He made a career-best 65% of his 126 post-up shots per second spectrum. The only season he took more post-up shots was in 2017-18 with New York, despite playing in just 48 games that year because of an ACL tear. He only shot 45% on those post-up attempts, however, that season. Although he didn't take a ton of them this past season, Porzingis shot it well from the three-point corners. He made 10 of his 21 attempts. I think with Boston, we'll see him take a lot more of these. The Celtics took the third most corner threes last year and were fifth in percentage. Washington, meanwhile, took the sixth fewest corner threes. I mentioned this about Bradley Beal as well in the video I did on him recently, but what decreased for Porzingis was his movement shooting without the dribble. When he was with New York and Dallas, Porzingis was one of the few seven-footers that could shoot it from distance or anywhere on the court while on the move and relocating. But this wasn't really part of his repertoire with the Wizards. In 186 games with the Knicks, he took 64 catch-and-shoot on the move shots. In 134 games with the Mavs, he took 20 of them, 
and in 82 games with the Wizards, he didn't take a single one, according to Second Spectrum. As far as relocation, he took 368 with the Knicks, 213 with the Mavs, and 104 with the Wizards. So basically what this tells us is that the Wizards turned him into more of a self-creator rather than someone relying more on shooting after off-ball movement. A big part of his game during his Dallas tenure was taking transition three-pointers. He took 53 of them with the Mavs, 28 with the Knicks, and just 17 with the Wizards. Seventy one percent of his made field goals were assisted in 2022 23. To compare, in 2019 20 with the Mavs, 81.4 percent of his made field goals were assisted. This past season, we saw him attack the basket far more both on drives and cuts. He had 46 dunks off drives, cuts, or rolls, the most in his career. Something we didn't see as much with the Wizards as we did when he was with the Knicks and Mavs was Porzingis catching alley-oop lobs. He only had 12 lob shot attempts last season and 20 altogether with Washington. He had 58 of them with Dallas and 45 of them with New York. With him heading to Boston, it will be interesting to see how he fares defensively. The Celtics are known for their switching on defense. In fact, they switched the second most times in pick and roll situations in the entire league this past season, with only the Nets switching more. Grant Williams and Al Horford ranked third and fourth respectively in total switches, according to Second Spectrum, while Jason Tatum was sixth. Porzingis, meanwhile, ranked 217th in total switches. Opponents took 22 shots when Porzingis defended the ball handler following the switch per second spectrum, but they only made eight of them. Here are some clips that show Porzingis effectively guarding in pick and roll following a switch. Just some general stats on Porzingis in the 2022-23 season. Over 65 games, he averaged 23.2 points, 8.4 rebounds, 2.7 assists, 0.9 steals, and 1.5 blocks, shooting 49.8% from the field overall and 38.5% from three-point range. He scored 20 plus points 46 times, including twice erupting for over 40. He set his career high on March 8th against the Hawks with 43 points. He also had a game on November 30th against Brooklyn in which he pulled down 19 rebounds. So that'll wrap up this video. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe.